beginning, we should also have a few shady stories. And this may be a shady story, a modern book burning, a case when new ethics were set aside. Surely they were. And I think it's time for the sword of truth to be cutting a little. Next one. <coughs> okay. Uh, Roger, John Eric, and myself put out a special issue of this really nice journal. And we had it, it was special issue in this year. And if we succeeded to come just before Christmas, we worked like hell. Uh, Hans was also contributing in it and several others. Pattern in solar variability, their planetary origin and terrestrial impact. That's very true and simple. And we thought that we had done a very nice pro work in this because we thought that we could had lifted the old hypothesis to a theory. I mean that the planets are causing the solar variability. That was a big thing. But then we did something else, because all the papers there, or most of the papers, went through the solar system and came to similar conclusions from different angles. And it's interesting that it's different angles. So whatever you do there, you end up that, yes, we are on the way into a new uh, um, uh, ground solar minimum. That means com completely contrary to what IPC is saying. We are going into a cold period, not into a warm period. And then things happen. Here comes, wow, the sword of, of not true truth, but the sword of, I don't think what it is, but like hell was, somebody from hell came and visited the world. And um, out of this came this book which you have seen, Planetary Influence on the Sun and the Earth, and a modern book burning. Okay? A you modern should, book burning, I was speak. You should say what happened to the, to the journal. I'm coming to that. <laughs> this, is just the back, this is just the background. So, but you can also see, because this was closed down, which I come to, uh, the outcome of that was this book. Uh, the first part was easy to sell. And I had it in Bentham, and Bentham was very excited about it, and no problem. But when they saw the last part, Modern Book, they turned it down, and I had to go to Nova, and they printed it, and all was very excellent, only the price is terrible. And I couldn't do anything about that, but I got it published. So, that is something about the book, uh, background. The book burning is always primitive and unacceptable. Usually it happens centuries ago. This one happened 2014. It fills us with uh, disgust and must be condemned. Oh, this is our, our, our special issue, burning. We were not burned, but the book was burned. Back to, to this again. Um, collected with 14 different pa papers, all in this quite nice, uh, there was a, in this pattern recognition. In a modern book burning. On the 17th of January, Mr. Rasmussen of Copernicus publication suddenly closed down the scientific journal. Uh, the decision came without discussion, without warning, and was absolute. The journal was finished and canceled, second cancelled as a journal of the Copernicus publication. This should be here. Uh, and uh, in the general discussion, general conclusions when the, of this book, when 19 eminent scientists, you have them all listed up here. It's a good group of people, with a, all with a fine background. Several of the people in special issue address the question of approaching new solar minimum. The conclusion was quite straightforward. That's what it Obviously, we are on the way into a new ground solar minimum. Nothing problem with that. That's a, exactly coming from what our facts. And that is exactly what you should have in a conclusion. 
because that's what the, the different uh, authors had written. But then comes what we co uh, now comment. This sheds serious doubt on the issue of a continual, even accelerated warming as proposed by the IPPC group. That's quite innocent, isn't it? I mean, Oh, in Wokati, nothing. Yeah. Maybe if it had a full stop after warming, it may not have been closed. You're still <laughs> saying that correctly. Yeah. Uh, uh, the last tense, uh, uh, innocent as it reads, wa uh, was to generate an unbelievable reaction by the manager, director of Copernicus, Mr. Uh, uh, Rasmussen. He was just a poem. Yes. And we don't know what it is, but it is interesting. Somebody called, maybe it was you, Roger, who called my attention to a blog where Mr. Um, James Anna. Yes, I think he's the author. I mean, he said, the problem, problems at the journal were first brought at my attention by Tim Sprague uh, just last night. I emailed various people to express my concerns, and the journal was closed down within 40, uh, 24 uh, hours. Yeah. He proudly, he declared. And this guy's an IPCC lead author. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, why you can tell, don't you? Uh, so, so there we have something. In, in huh? this book, there is a special little issue on called the, uh, these terrible gatekeepers beginning when, with Co Copernicus. Okay? Co Co Copernicus, when he wrote his wonderful uh, revolutionary book, but he was, he was old, and it was a hand of, a, of a one of his students, and the student got promoted to a professorship, and it had to uh, taken over by Osiander, uh, um, and he wrote an anonymous preface. So it looked like if it was uh, written by Copernicus himself, where he so to say, this is, this is just a hypothesis. I don't claim it is like that, just a hypothesis. And of course it was deadly right, it was observational effect in Copernicus. So, and uh, Giordano Bruno uh, immediately understood what it was all about and said, said um, uh, that he is a stupid, <coughs> he said something nice in the Italian was with the, about he, this man which has written it uh, cannot be Copernicus because this one is a stupid ass. <laughs> and uh, then I said, okay, Rasmussen deserves exactly the same wording. What it led to, it was primarily Monton was very upset and wrote a very nice article in the uh, town blog uh, and also around the world. So we wanted to save our fine papers in a new one. And we tried to do that, but when, we, when I had it in Bentham, I said, no, 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 we cannot pub republish something which is already published. You have to make a review of it. So I started to make a review out of all these 14 paper, uh, papers. And that's not so easy. But I sent it out to all people and they agreed. There were very little changes. So we had this. But then we had also this end uh, modern book party. I had a chapter on the beginning, then came a whole section, section B here, um, earthly disharmony. The other was earthly harmony. He he heavenly harmony. <laughs> heavenly harmony. Oh, sorry, heavenly harmony, and this is earthly disharmony and water book. <laughs> and I had an introduction, and then Christopher had a fantastic, and a fantastic, because it's um, paper in, in this one. The um, uh, Terramagadon cult strikes back, and that was uh, <laughs> Hunter had written a book, you know this, about uh, Terramagadon, that this is the final. Um, battle between the good and bad, and Amagadon was the was the um, was the mountain where it's supposed to happen, but this time it was the thermal. Okay, okay. and the 2030, 
And 2030 is, of course, very interesting for us, because then is where we predict the uh, beginning of a uh, cold phase, maybe a little ice age, who knows. And then come uh, Gregory, which is wonderful historical thing of science. I mean, back into the door. Well, how can you say that anything is really written in stones? It's all written. And he's, he's very, so the paradigm, this is the worst thing here, that it doesn't exist anything, because as soon as you have claimed it, the paradigm, it's time to change it. And Christopher Moncton wrote a very nice essay here, and what is science and what is not science? And this is very basically for us. What is science but um, seeking the tr truth at whatever cost it will be. That's very nice. Uh, uh, so this is fair. And then I wrote something about climatic fundamentalism. They wanted to kill us, and I think uh, you don't do that. And if you do that, there's something <coughs> wrong about it. And we, I had a little discussion about what is sci climate deniers. It cannot be us, because we are the one which work with the real thing. The other deniers, those are working with an illusion. So if anybody is denier, it's, it's that group of people. Okay. And then I had a little funny thing with uh, when the recent sleeps monster takes wing. I used the Goya picture uh, and uh, uh, let uh, Bolin meet Machiavelli in Hades uh, uh, Ash Wednesday. Uh, and, and of course, Machiavelli being excellent in his wording and took down Berlin and Berlin was like a serial. Mm -hmm. His answer was just what he was saying, but he was trapped completely. And then I let, um, let Rasmussen, our friend in Copernicus uh, publication, meet uh, Johannes II, mm -hmm. the Pope. Uh, and uh, of course, the Pope, he was, oh my, my dear child, you know. and Rasmussen was taken down because he was so small and innocent, uh, in short pants nearly, and uh, couldn't defend it. And the last one was uh, um, uh, uh, not a friend of Ramsdorf, uh, he also from the he had written a lot on sea level, so <coughs> he met Poseidon himself. And of course, he couldn't say very much against it. Towards Poseidon. Poseidon ha happened to have very similar views as me, of course. <laughs> but that's enough. So this is this is what we have in the book, and so you can say something of this wouldn't happen if we haven't had this terrible closing down. Or something has happened that I jumped in the when you say on the web of Copernicus, we read the following statement, and that's thanks to you, Vecna, because you pointed. Promoting, they, they, what they are saying about Copernicus, promoting scientific work is our focus, serving those dedicated to science is our passion. No, 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 that was idiot. And what did they do? Kill the very promising scientific journal. Disgraced, highly dedicated science ignored the scientific breakthrough, started a modern book, book burning. Indeed, this is to speak with a for, forked tongue, to say the least. Whatever, they violated the deepest principles of geoethics. Yes. So there we are. Uh, <clears throat> and this is about this terrible uh, gatekeepers. Rasmussen, of course, he now deserves Osiandus. I told you before, uh, an ignorant and um, consulted ass. <laughs> you can read it in Italian. Un asino ignorante e preso di So, of course, this was called by, by Giordano Bruno, which is a clever man. He saw that it was a, all a charade. And uh, now he, Rasmussen becomes a modern Osiander. And if you're happy with this, I don't, I don't wonder. The Termagadon cult strikes back, okay, well, chapter them. Bowing to extreme pressure from a handful <coughs> of mad scientists, mad, that is, at the uh, loss of income and prestige, that is, uh, inexorable co collapse of the great lie entailed. 
the managing director of Copernicus Scientific Web, one Rasmussen, has uh, arbitrarily and uh, capriciously killed the promising new journal pattern. There is only one reasonable conclusion to be drawn from the above passage. The age of reason and enlightenment is over. The dark age are back. But this is typical uh, Moncton writing. But it's just, of course it's true. Of course it's true. And then we have uh, the other. In a letter to Grand uh, Duke, uh, Duke uh, Duchess of Christina of Tuscany, uh, Galileo Galilei writes, this is 1615, 15, 400 years exactly. We celebrate this anniversary. No one should be scorned in physical disputes for not holding the opinions which happen to please the other people best. Very good. Yeah. Really, very good. Very good. This is what this was in the year uh, 1650, precisely 400 years. Still, the same uh, parochial views persist today, and you find that I I this in, uh, in the Nova book. And here we are, the special volume is just burning. And that is sad because it was a very good journal. Uh, it tried to, to be, uh, have a second privately driven by, by, by the main, uh, co main editor-in-chief, uh, Crawford, in um, to, uh, Algeria. But of course, he couldn't, couldn't make the economy, so it's even closed down. But the papers are still on the net, not least in, uh, um, in Rogers' block. And I think that's all. Just okay. a small thing right now. This is open for comments. Just a quick query then. Yeah. This book, yeah. you haven't got any more copies, have you, at the moment? I, yeah, you have, to, you have to buy it. From yeah, you to buy it but, uh, and you, you got a special offer. That's it's, not, it's not very uh, much 20% off, but, but you all got the possibility. And if you take that 20% 20, 20 off and go to your library and say, you, this is a good book, buy it. This was Hans... Uh, yeah, it's send it, send it. Send it. Yeah. Are you I have no, I have a limited number of copies of the journal. The original journal. Yeah. yeah. Do you have on the oh, look, special issue? Yes. You want to sell it for Yeah. Do you well, want to sell it to PSI? Yes. Um, no, yeah, no, yes. This is becoming, of course, very. The special issue was printed in, uh, I think, not more than 50 copies or something. So the, those who are so ordered it to have are sitting on a valuable um, piece of, of yes, scientific if you, if you want to support the work that we're trying to do, then be prepared to offer a very good price for for <laughs> yeah, a copy of the original journal. Um, yeah. I have some too. Yes. Well, yes. Yeah. 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 I think I have about seven or eight. Yeah. Uh, I share with you the criticism on uh, behalf of uh, IPCC, uh, which concerns the influence of man-made warming. Uh, I agree <coughs> with what you say. However, the global warming, whether be produced uh, by man or by nature, can hardly be, not, uh, be denied. Uh, the uh, uh, mountain uh, glaciers are melting away. It may be observed. <laughs> yeah, but that, uh, thank you. But that is a completely different story. I tried to address it partly, very briefly, in my first lecture. Because certainly there are climatic changes. But the people here, we are believing that that is a natural process. Then the question is, what is driving it? And what we have been finding here, all of us, not least the, uh, our dear um, chairman, is that it's primarily driven by solar variability. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you say we are entering the, the minimum of sun 
activity, yeah. but uh, we see that uh, mountain glaciers are. Uh, uh, this is also that. Wait, wait. You should ask this, but let me ask it. The question is where and where. One of the best glaciologists is, uh, is Don Easterbrook. There's another Easterbrook than the one you talk about. Don Easterbrook. He has gone through this material. And very many places it is <coughs> advancing and not really. You cannot have a generalization. We have in Antarctica where they say it certainly is not decreasing there, rather expanding. What was happening is in the Arctic up to the year 2000, it became well, a warm Arctic water spilled over into the Barents Sea. So it, of course, warmed it up. But that cycle is over. Uh, Jan Erik showed it. So in the last um, 15 years, it is really on its way of cooling. But in the previous time, of course, it was a warming. That warming was then said to be to go so far that the, the Arctic would be open. But to melt water, ice, which is still already floating in the ocean, doesn't affect the global sea level <coughs> at all. Because it, it doesn't all affect the uh, sea level, but uh, it, uh, 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 it is uh, proof that the melting is proof that the, 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 the temperature grows. Yeah, but no one denies that. No one denies that. No one denies that. No one denies that. Look at it, the picture he shows. It is a warming up to 2000, and then after that is a cooling. And we have seen in the last year the, uh, the Arctic volume has increased, not decreased. It was 2008, well, it was at, a, at well, its lowest. Uh, the, uh, uh, the warming, yeah. even uh, of course with uh, oscillations, <coughs> but uh, uh, global warming on the large time scale may hardly be, not be denied. Uh, the uh, mountain glaciers in the High Tatra Mountains disappeared uh, some 10,000 years ago. And uh, on this scale, the 15 years uh, uh, period uh, is nothing. Okay. It says nothing I, at well, all. I'd like to, yes. to just offer something on that. What, what our journal was about was about cycles, not just on short time scale, but cycles on long time scales as well. And we've actually seen a general warming in the climate all the way from before the Industrial Revolution even started. This warming yes. started around 1700. We'll probably continue generally until maybe 2200, and then we'll decline again, because there is a 1,000 year cycle. And then there are also 60 year cycles, and this is particularly important with respect to the claims made by the IPCC scientists, because they show, uh, they say that the warming in the second half of the 20th century, they actually mean from around 1976, 